So we use animals for a whole bunch of different things, not just for pets. And we're going to talk a little bit about how we use pocket pets in particular. So hamsters were actually used in medical research in 1931, but in this whole process of using them for research, they actually found that they could be tamed and made into a pretty cool pet. Um, the golden hamster is actually the most abundant hamster used for both research and for pets. Um, dwarf and small desert hamsters make good pets, but a lot of times kids have trouble handling them simply because they're smaller. Gerbils uh, um, actually were first bred in captivity by Japanese scientists, and they were, they were bred purely because they were easy to work with. Um, they're pretty gentle. They're active during the day. They're not nocturnal, and um, they don't really have any special food or housing requirements. Um, they drink very little water. They're basically odorless. They don't really have any stench to them, and they don't really bite very often. Um, and because of all of this, not only were they used for research, but they were also used for pets. Um, different uses for rats. Um, the white albino rat has actually been a major importance in medical, biological, and psychological research. That's really where we use the rat a lot. They were used to develop drugs, studying different diseases, nutrition, aging, and a couple other different things. Um, reproduction being one of them because they just reproduce quickly. Um, they are intelligent and they have the ability to learn, so they've actually been able to be used in behavioral studies. Um, colored rats have really been accepted as pets. Um, I guess sometimes the white rats freak people out, but they don't bother me. Um, use of mice. So they were used for medical and biological research, especially with hereditary studies. And hereditary is just a fancy word for genetics, basically. Um, you want to make sure that, you know, when you're, when you're looking at mice, they reproduce so quickly. It's really easy to track genetics through the generations because you can get generations of mice without even thinking about it. Um, pet mice are actually relatively free of disease, so there's not a whole lot of special care that comes along with them. And especially if you handle them frequently, they don't really show a whole bunch of tendencies as far as like biting or escaping, anything like that. They're actually pretty easygoing pets. Uses of guinea pigs. Um, believe it or not, they were actually originally bred for meat production. And um, still people use them for that in Ecuador, Peru, and Bolivia. They're also used as laboratory animals for research on pathology, nutrition, genetics, toxicology, and also serum development. And of course, they're also used as a pet. Uses for chinchillas. Um, they actually were used as a source of fur for thousands of years. Their fur is very soft. Um, they were brought to California from South America specifically to breed for their fur. In order to make a full-length coat, it requires somewhere between 120 to 150 pelts. That's a lot of chinchilla. Um, they've been used as pets since the 1950s, but they were originally used for their fur. Uses of ferrets. Um, the thing with ferrets, they have this kind of like musky, nasty smell to them, so they do need to be descented, but um, they've actually really been found to be wonderful pets. They're, they're fun, they have their own little personalities, they're really cute. Um, it's just that smell can get to some people. Um, you also need to make sure that you castrate your males so that no baby ferrets start running around. Um, they actually were used to help wire airplanes in hard to reach places. The cool thing about ferrets is they don't actually have a collarbone, so anywhere their head can go, the rest of their body can fit too. So this would include things like under doors that are closed and that sort of thing. So they can really fit into some tight spaces. Um, they've actually been used in scientific research because they can catch the same types of colds that people do. And I'm sure you know this, we don't have a cure for the common cold. We can control symptoms, but we don't necessarily have a cure for the common cold. So um, we use ferrets a lot of times in research on that because they get the same colds that we do. All right, we'll talk about bird breeds in the next video.